Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and in the near future, I'm going to have a custom brush design series that's out in the store. So before then, I want to show you a few unusual ways that you can use custom brushes in your workflow. And for today's video, we're going to add some dynamic shadows to this boring sidewalk. So here's the sidewalk with no shadows, and then here's the same sidewalk that looks like light is coming down through leaves of trees and it looks a lot more interesting. It's more dynamic. But it's also very technical to get this sort of a look. It'd be really hard to paint all of these leaves from this camera angle. Because if you've watched many of my videos, you know that I like to do rendering with temp layers. So I'll use a opacity brush on its own layer, and then go to an eraser and erase away what I don't want. And in this way, I can get nice, smooth rendering. A lot of times when I use a custom brush, I'm going to be painting in an entirely different manner. And for these leaves, what I'm going to use a custom brush for is to create an interesting shape, an interesting silhouette. And I'm actually going to make it in a totally different document to begin with. So my goal here is to draw a bunch of leaves as if they're being seen from the top down. This is sort of my shadow shape when seen out of context. And this custom brush is great at giving me a randomized edge. I'd have trouble rendering with it, but when it comes to just making this shape, it's very purpose-built. It does a good job at this one thing. And I can use that same tip as an eraser and erase away some gaps in the leaves. And with a little more of this, I get a pretty naturalistic looking shadow shape. So here's my boring sidewalk, and it's time to bring that leaf shadow shape into my scene. Now you'll notice right away that this is in the wrong perspective. Well, that's not a problem. I'm going to make a safe copy, and then begin to distort these into the right perspective. So you can see already that painting the shape of these leaves in perspective would have been a real challenge. There's a lot of different angles to consider, and that would have made the shape probably less randomized at the end of the day, because I would have had to think too carefully about it while I worked. Now the black doesn't really work, but all I'm doing here is trying to get the shape correct. And I'm going to use this shape to create sort of a stencil or a mask. So I can merge all these together, use control click to grab a selection, and then I'll make a layer set and assign that as a mask for the layer set. So now anytime I make a new layer, it's going to receive this mask. And at this point, I can use any brushes I want, including the brushes that I'm more familiar rendering with. So I've set this to multiply, I'll pick a shadow color. And now I'm just painting with a basic airbrush. But because of the shape of that mask, I'm only painting in these shadow shapes. So it looks like sun coming through leaves on a tree. But the important takeaway here is the way that I used the custom brush. What I wanted to create was an interesting silhouette shape. Really, I just wanted to create that layer mask. And the easiest way for me to do that was to do it in 2D on a different canvas. And that's where the shape quality of that tree brush was really useful. If I had tried to use that exact same randomized tree brush to paint in this image, it never would have worked. It wouldn't have been in the correct perspective. So sometimes it takes a little abstract thinking to consider how to best create and use a custom brush. So since this video focused on using custom brushes for shape, the next video is going to talk about using custom brushes for texture, how to use them as a nice overlay. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.